News. Lobbyists are fed up with politicians accepting their money and then not coming through. Opinion. When the automated police force orders you inside, that's just them doing their job. Remix. Remix. Even lost my job partially due to the whole global warming issue. Increase in oil prices. The guy's scared. This is Top Story with Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. I've been a listener for about 20 years. I'm, I'm talking to you, make me feel better. Where the news meets your opinion. Pick up the phone and talk about it. 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Skeen. Good morning and welcome to Top Story. 736-0300 is the number to call. Good morning, Jill. <laughs> Good morning, Kelly. Tuesday. I, happy Tuesday. Oh, yeah. I hate to start the show off on a combative note. Why, what? But I just couldn't help what? to see this this morning. I just couldn't ignore it. The White House. Already? We can't even say good morning? How was we your We said day? good what? morning. We oh said my gosh. good morning. It's time to get down to business. Gosh, what happened to the pleasantries? Do we have any pleasantries no left more on the show? Pleasantries. Oh my god. What? How do you know what I'm gonna say? I have no idea, but it was pretty abrupt into good morning and then boom. The White House sent three officials to attend Monday's funeral for Michael Brown in St. Louis. Three more than it sent for former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's funeral last year. How many officials attended the memorial mass yesterday for murdered journalist James Foley? None. Zero. Zilch. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome oh to Top my Story. Oh, gosh. How are you today? I don't even know. I'm being bombarded from the start. I'm fine. It's not being it's bombarded. Tuesday. I'm just announcing facts. Oh, geez. Anyway, um, we, I'm good today. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I hope someone adopted my kitty. Oh, the animal that's shelter. Right. Please go in. They named him Joker. I still feel bad. I have terrible guilt. Well, you should. I know. You should feel I guilty. Do. I feel bad. You took that poor kitten home. You gave it false hopes for 24 hours. We had a really nice you, overnight. And then you took it back. I did. I mean... They knew it How was a low was, he, can you go? <laughs> he was out on loan. He was out on approval. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> and you I didn't just, approve I, him? I, yeah, well, Gracie had such a fit, you know. But anyway, I'm just hoping someone will please go there and adopt him. I'm just going to keep saying it. Please, please adopt my little kitty, Joker. 736 2299 is the number to call for the animal <laughs> shelter, ladies and gentlemen. Tell them you want the little kitty that Jill Scheme had. <laughs> that I rejected. <laughs> <laughs> that Jill Scheme rejected. <laughs> Took that- <laughs> out for 24 hours and then took it back. It had a really nice overnight. How cruel. Mm. Gave the poor kitty false It hopes. had nothing to do with him. And now it's back in prison. <laughs> my, my, my. I had like a dream about it. It's terrible. I miss it. You, know, you should have had a nightmare okay. about it. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to say it again because I'm just hoping someone <laughs> heard. Didn't If they didn't hear yesterday, they heard today. Come on. Okay. All right. Go All on. Right. Well, we do have a little news. By the way, we have John Pitts coming up, the manager of the Twin Falls County Fair. It's fair week. It is fair week. Where did summer go? I don't know. And I'm interested always. It's kind of fun to see what their latest fair food is. People oh, try yeah. to top each other oh, is I the know. most crazy fair food. I know. I, I know. haven't even read anything about Deep it. Deep fat so. fried butter. I know. You know? I, I mean, <laughs> how much I think more that was last vein year's. clogging can you get? Wasn't that last year? Uh, I don't know if it I was here so. or not. I, it's probably been that somewhere. It was in Texas a while ago. The deep yeah, fried butter. Maybe yeah. that's where it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have somebody calling. All right. Maybe they they adopted my kitty. <clears throat> maybe they did. Maybe they want information about it. Okay. Should we find out? Yes. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry, Jill. What? I don't have anything pleasant to say. Oh no, what? <laughs> um, Are you gonna because... adopt my kitty? <laughs> no. Oh no. No. Oh no. I don't like cats very much. <laughs> I won't tell Gracie that. <laughs> But, um, Kelly, you forgot to mention uh, the two-star general that served in Vietnam that recently died, was buried in Arlington Cemetery. Oh, that's right. And no one attended his funeral either. Yeah. It's a so, sad state of affairs, so isn't sad. it? Yeah, yeah, it is. I think, I think the administration is just forgetting these people, and it's really sad, and I... I just hope that we as a country aren't forgetting them. 
Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. Good message. Uh, thanks for that reminder, too. Did I say Steve Millington was coming up from the Twin Falls Republicans? He'll be here at 8.30. I don't know. You said John Talked Pitts. Talked about John Pitts, and then I think we just kind of skimmed is over here, right? Steve. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. So, And uh, I'm going to be at the... Uh, Republican booth at the fair on Friday. Wow, from really? Four until six. That's right. Wow. So, what you didn't want me, Steve? What's wrong with that? You didn't want me? <laughs> Come on, you can't handle they the just, truth. They, you can't handle the truth. They figured you would be over <laughs> at the Democrat booth. So <laughs> you can't handle the truth. There you go. We, Fine, I won't be there. We do have some other news this morning. I thought this was kind of interesting. An Oregon State State Trooper say a man driving a car stolen in Pasco, Washington attacked a commercial truck driver in Eastern Oregon Monday, stabbing the driver multiple times. Yikes. The driver of the truck was from Jerome. Really? 63-year-old Charles Van Zandt of Jerome. uh, Flown to Boise. He's being treated for injuries that were not considered life-threatening. Apparently, the guy in the car just come up and starts ramming the the, uh, trailer of the truck. And so the driver pulls over, and the guy comes up with a knife and starts stabbing him. Then he leaves for a while, runs up the side of a hill, comes back down, and they fight again. And uh, finally, uh, onlookers stopped and kind of helped out, and they got the police, and they came and arrested the guy. That's a little bit scary. I don't know if that – they don't know why he did it, if it was road rage or, or what in the world it was. But uh, Well, I, you smokes. would think that the truck would take off after the first attack or something instead of wait for him to come back. I don't know. I mean, that I, was the truck disabled know. at that point? I don't know. Don't know. That is really disturbing. I it mean, there's disturbing. so many disturbing things now. Uh, that, yeah. that is – you can't even drive a truck anymore and without being attacked. Or anything, Anything. Almost. Well, you know, Tom always makes fun of me of locking my doors all the time. But when I lived in Boston, they were doing a lot of those carjackings. Yeah. And a lot of them, well, their doors were open. It's like, who drives with your doors open? I know. You know, I, you I always... You have a stoplight and boom, someone's jumped in your car and throws you out and takes your car. Like, oh my god. In my vehicle, when I get in it, start it up and put it in gear, the doors automatically lock. Oh, and, do they? And I kind of like that feature, you know. My, uh, what year is your vehicle? It's a 2007. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Mine, you actually have to hit a little button. And oh, yeah. Yours is back from last 2001. century. 2001. <laughs> oh, it is this century. Okay. It is. I love my car. I'm keeping my car. But I don't think it's it's wrong to drive with your doors locked. No. Because when you stop at a stop sign or you stop anywhere, somebody could run out from the bushes and well, open the door. Well, that's what they were and, doing. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And especially if you're, you know, when I was back there, a single woman. And, you know, you just always are worried. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. This morning, one of the commentators on this station reported that a man back east had had received a uh, contraception ID card for his three month old daughter, and when he investigated it, they said he it was it, law says he can't opt out. What is a contraception so ID card? I've never heard yeah. of that. I never heard of it either, but they, the thing is, he they said he can't opt out. You can opt out. I, I, All you have to do is know the law, and you can opt out. All you have to do is just quit do, quit partaking of the things of Caesar. Okay. Uh, maybe, Caesar, up, maybe Caesar issued the contraception look, card. I've you, never heard of that. You I'm have sorry. the computer in front of you. You look up contraception card just out of curiosity. Have contraception you, uh, ID card. And see what it says. And while you're doing this, I'll move along here. They have a very unique <laughs> harvest underway in the rice fields of Cambodia. Oh, gosh. This was so awful. Where tens of thousands of wild rats are being trapped alive each day to feed a growing export market for the meat of rural rodents. Popularity, or I'm sorry, popularly considered a disease-carrying nuisance in many societies, the rice field rats, Rattus argentinaventer, or whatever that scientific name is, of this small Southeast Asian nation are considered a healthy delicacy due to their free-range lifestyle and largely organic diet. See, organic rats. Rat catching season reaches its height after the rice harvest in June and July when rats have little to eat in that part of the rural Kampong Cham province, 60 kilometers from the capital of Phnom Penh. Somewhat proudly, he listed off the superior eating habits of the rats. This is a farmer that, he, that captures them. He had caught the night before rice stalks, the vegetable crops of unlucky local farmers, 
and the roots of wild plants. He oh, says, what could be bad with that? Tastes, tastes like pork. Oh, it wasn't like chicken? No, this is pork. This is pork. On a good night, he can catch up to 25 kilograms of rats. Well, though, though rat meat tastes a little bit like pork, Mr. Chim, who was one of the other farmers, said it was not really his preferred meal. He says, we sell the rats for money and buy fish instead. <laughs> I'm not eating no rat. I what, think are you that's kidding a, me? That's an excellent idea. Oh, my I, uh, goodness. I couldn't eat rat. And, and people say, you don't know what you'll do if you're starving to death. And I'm sure that's right. Well, but if I were just you know, mildly hungry. There is no way I could eat a rat. Well, when I was at Rotary, um, they did a presentation on um, guinea pigs. And I forget which country it was. I don't know if it was Ecuador, Guatemala. I don't remember. But they raised guinea pigs for meat. Really? I was like, really? What about beans? And they had this slide of like all this this pile of dead guinea pigs. I'm like, oh my gosh. (laughs) You know, beans are a really good source of protein. Yeah, they're eating guinea pigs. Yeah, hmm. and the big well, ones Well, we eat are... rabbit. We eat rabbit. Yeah, there's a lot of things, you know. Kind of but... tastes like chicken. Does it? Yeah, but uh, I think it's the name. If rats had a different name, maybe. Maybe if they weren't called rats. Maybe, maybe if they were called be... chicken. Yeah, there you <laughs> or go. Pork. Or pork. Exactly, or bacon or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. And the pictures are so vile of the rats in the cage. Ugh, oh, God. <laughs> Okay, and finally, <laughs> pediatricians... I'll make you a vegan yet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> pediatricians officially want high schools to start later. I think this is actually a good topic for people because their kids sleep in. I know, and the poor little snowflakes can't get to bed before 1 o'clock because they're just too busy texting and playing on the computer and playing computer games. So in order for them to get enough sleep, we should move the schools it's the to circ- start their, it's later. It's circadian That's rhythms. That's what we should do oh, for crying out loud. Please. Grab your kid by the ear, get him out, there give him a studies. pat on the butt, and tell him to get ready and get off to school. So we ought to start school at 6 a.m. So if they're less effective in school, that's the goal? I mean, really, if you move it to 8, 8.30, is that what they said? Yeah, 8.30 okay. a.m. About 40% of high schools in the country start earlier than 8 a.m. Oh, my gosh. The pain of it all. A phenomenon that has negative effects on teens' safety, well-being, and education. Why so that means that? when People I have, have to different... get up at 4.30 to be to work at 5 o'clock, my well-being must be at the bottom of the pit. I mean, for crying out uh, loud. Adolescents I'm going are to growing. Tell them They're here, different than adults. I'm going to and tell that's them, the whole I point. I can't do this. This is bad for my well-being. I, I can't get here before 8.30. I think All right? we, should, we should have asked parents. We can ask parents. We don't have time right now, unfortunately. (laughs) But uh, maybe we can do that later. Maybe. I I I think think it's actually a good idea because it's... This is ridiculous. Well, why is it ridiculous? There's development stages in every form of life. And once you're an adult, it's different. You've got 24 hours in a day. Oh, my gosh. So so use use that time So these researchers just make it up? If you're tired when you're getting up for school in the morning, go to bed earlier the night before. It's an easy fix. that's not what it's about. They need more sleep than we do as we get That's older. That's fine. Go Researchers to bed earlier. Are ta- yeah, right. And yeah. Oh yeah. And they can't it. do that. Oh my gosh. What time Make are they going to bed? Go to bed earlier. You've what is your be problem? Me. Researchers oh. are showing that their systems are different than ours. Then what is your problem? Then go to bed earlier. That's the solution. Yeah, they should go to bed at more seven. sleep equals to bed earlier. We got John oh, Pitts up next. Oh my God. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story, and I uh, want to welcome John Pitts, the manager of the Twin Falls County Fair. Hello, John. Hi there. Good. You know, Good you morning. were just here know, a month like ago well, <laughs> to talk like about yeah. last year's fair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what what improvements we did on the grounds this year and some of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. What what did you do? Did you think this year any improvements on the ground? Yeah, the foundation board. Uh, Got some funding through some sponsorships. We got a permanent covered picnic area on the food line now. Oh, oh that's nice. And uh, the county grant writer was, was successful in writing a grant, so we're in the process. They didn't release the funds till the middle of July, so obviously it's not done. But we've got a, a new uh, nine room toilet shower sink facility started in the RV park. So oh, oh, wow. that'll be nice. No kidding. Wow. Well, now, uh, of course, the fair starts Wednesday, right? Yep, goes, tomorrow. Goes through Monday. Yes. And uh, is, any changes on the admission price? Nope. Admission's the same as it's been for the last 
five, six years. Okay. Which is? Um, free sale, if you buy them up until tonight, you can get fair admission for $5 for adults or $3 for kids. Okay. And once you once the fair starts, you come to the gate, there's $7 for adults, $6 for seniors, and $3 for kids. Okay, and uh, is the parking out in the hayfield, is that free again? Yes. Okay. still free. And they plus they have a shuttle service that kind of goes out there. and. Yeah, and then the foundation board in. also runs an on-ground shuttle for when you've been walking around the fair, fair all day and are tired and need to get back somewhere. Why oh, they've yeah. got golf carts running around. They can give you and your family or whatever a ride to different areas of the fairgrounds. Um, any new rides? They've got, um, they change up the new carnival we got last year. Um, they're still rolling in. They just folded up Sunday in Mile City. Oh, so that wow. Was a pretty good hike coming down no here. Kidding. <laughs> but uh, um, they've got some new stuff coming. The speed ride's back, that by popular demand. Okay. And uh, the super shot's back, of course. That was, a, you could always tell when that tripped because there was a big screech all oh. over the fairgrounds when that <laughs> dropped. I'm, I'm sure. But. Uh, Yep, we've got, um, he, he brought in two or three different rides. He, he owns about 40 rides, and we've got room on the Midway for about 26 or 27. Oh, okay. So he can bring a few different rides every year. And Any new well, acts like um, hypnotists or lions or bears or whatever you usually bring Wild about monkeys. Wild about monkeys. Yeah. Right. Monkeys. All right. I've, I've seen his show at two or three other fairs mm-hmm. when we've been going to different places around the area this year, and it's a really fun show. It's educational monkey show but it's also really fun the kids will love it mm, oh good very good yeah. now the most important thing about any fair is the food oh yeah so what do we got this year anything new and exciting and different and weird <laughs> well i don't know about weird but we got a new vendor coming in that it makes a salad either a seafood or a fruit salad in a big coconut and he oh. uses the coconut milk as part of his recipe for the sauce that goes on the salad and he said that's been really popular around fairs around the valley. He puts the lime oh. in the coconut. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you said also Shakeout was going to do something new this year. Yeah, Shakeout's kind of veered away from their hamburger menu, and they're going to do the Dutch oven. So they'll mm. have Dutch oven chicken, potatoes. Oh, my. That type of thing. So that'll be a really good addition. It's been the old Dutch oven chicken booth that left several years ago. People missed that, and they were asking for it. For years after they left, and yeah. I think that'll be a very popular booth again. Well, it'll smell good around the fair again this year. I know. You bet. <clears throat> what about concerts or something new? Um, yeah, we've got Dustin Lynch coming in this year. Okay. And uh, with his Cowboys and Angels song and She Cranks My Tractor. You want to sing that for us, John? An up and coming artist, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt; he's probably a good looking, skinny butted cowboy, you know. Probably, <laughs> yeah. You know. And, uh, that does that always helps. Yeah, and then Old Dominion is their opener. We kind of lucked out on them this year. We uh, they had been um, writing hit songs for several years for Taylor Swift, Keith Urban, those those type of artists. They finally figured out that maybe if they started a band they could make the money off their own songs yeah so uh, they were getting a lot of airtime on Sirius radio and they finally just started to break into the network market oh good and so i think that's going to be you're going to hear a lot about them in the next few years oh great now and the, how much are t- is separate right no they're he, they're opening for D- dustin lynch oh, okay same night and when is that when is that concert sunday okay 7 30 okay and how much are tickets i mean uh, that's re- separate from the admission the fair price right that's not free Right. Well, kind of. The fair admission is free with a concert ticket. Okay. Yeah. So uh, um, the, I think the reserve seating is $20 and the general admission is 17 Okay. Now, they're also having a... a uh, the, I can't help you. What? We had them on the air last week. The, uh, the monster, big truck. monster truck. Yeah. Ah. I, I kept trying to say tractor pull, but that wasn't right. Yeah, no, the all-star monster trucks, the first year we tried them at fair since I've been here was last year. They put on a really good show. Um we had a little bit of trouble. Those trucks burn about eight gallon of, of alcohol in a five minute run. So oh, they you're run, kidding! So they run pretty warm. <laughs> oh so, my! I had a car like that once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they uh, they needed some cool down time, and we had trouble getting something for fill in last year. So we brought in uh, some transformers this year. They're thirty. They're mobile robots that transform up into a thirty foot thirty foot tall, one bad guy, one good guy kind of a thing. And oh. Oh, uh, it gives the it gives a little bit of a break in the middle with something going on. Yeah, 
and lets those big trucks cool off a little bit. All and right. We've got a school bus this year and a couple minivans for them to jump over, so those trucks will catch some air. Oh, very cool. So, well, John, John, best of luck. Yeah, we're out of time, but, hey, thanks for telling us about this. We'll Thank see you at the fair. All right. You're going to be there, right? Oh, probably. Yeah, okay. <laughs> John, Pitts and the, uh, John Pitts from the Twin Falls County Fair. Thanks, sir. We'll see you next time. Thanks, we got John. Steve Millington up next with the Twin Falls Republicans. 7360300 was the number to call here this morning on Top Story, and I just wanted to let you know that the uh, the folks at uh, far more of at, actually at Stanley and Company they're kind of there in the same area. Stanley and Company has the uh, low and honey loader, mm-hmm. and uh, as we've noticed here in the past few weeks with all the rain we've had, uh, when the rain falleth from the sky, then the green manure runneth around the ground, and the best way to pick it up is with a low and honey loader. So if you have a feedlot or dairy operation where that is an issue, you might want to consider this, and you can talk to Pat Hartzell about it at uh, 280-1167. He can set you up with an appointment where one of these uh, low and honey loaders is in operation, and you can see it working and then uh, decide if maybe something like this would be of beneficial use on your operation. So give Pat a call. Tell him that Kelly and Jill told you to call. His personal cell phone is 280-1167. That's Pat Hartzell. If nothing else, just call him up and say, hey, Kelly and Jill said to call up and say hi. Hello. Yeah, yeah. He'd appreciate that. I'm sure. <laughs> Especially between 9 and 5. Especially now. <laughs> yeah, right now. When yeah. everything's busy. That's right. The Democrat secular progressive move. Political correctness is killing us too. They want to take the money from the hard working man and give it to the lazy folks and don't give a damn. Democrats and liberals, shame on you. Don't punish us all. Just if these are few. You're holding people back while we're picking up the slack and that's why we can't vote. Well, with that song, it's always followed by Steve Millington with the Twin Falls Republicans. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. How's everything going? Hey, it's great. We got sunshine today. Yes, and it's a good thing because my deck needs to dry off so I can give it a second coat of sealant. I, I think everything needs to dry off for oh, a day or two. Holy yeah, cow. Because we're waiting with bated breath to see the next picture on Facebook of Kelly's, <laughs> of Kelly's deck. I just can't sleep. I'm waiting to yeah, see what well, the final okay, product I'll, is. I'll take some more pictures and send them to you. you well, know, the transition, yeah. I was going to say the transition between John Pitts, you guys are having a booth at the... Yes, the Republicans do have a booth at the fair. And we're kind of across the uh, walkway from the uh, um, flowers, horticulture, and the photography section. So you're still in the same place. <laughs> same place we've always been. 40 years. Yep, yeah, forever and ever, it seems yeah. like. Are you going to have your bean, uh, the voting count? You know, I don't beans? know whether we'll have the uh, bean voting count or not. Unscientifically, uh, as the, it is. The unscientific... <laughs> Bean pole, yeah, I guess we'll right. call it the bean pole. Uh, but we do have a couple of things. Uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Brad Little will be here um, Thursday afternoon, and on Friday afternoon, <clears throat> in conjunction with our live broadcast on KLIX. Yes. With Kelly Class. With Kelly Class. Yeah, I guess you guys couldn't handle me, huh? Well, the invitation what? is extended. Jill's going to be at the Democrat booth. She'll be over yeah. at the Democrat yeah. booth. Right. Um, <laughs> Governor Otter will be at our uh, booth between 4 and 6 on Friday afternoon. And we have extended invitations to all of our local legislators, the three senators and the uh, six uh, representatives that serve the Twin Falls County, Jerome County. Uh, and uh, they have most, nearly all of them have said yes, they'll be there during that same time frame. So we should have a really good crowd on Friday afternoon. But we will be there from Wednesday through Monday, all day long, yeah. singing, any, the, singing any, the Republican song. Has anybody what talked to Brian Nyworth or uh, Jack Holland to see what the weather's going to be like? It's New- uh, Brian you, 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 you say his name wrong. You say it wrong yesterday. It's uh, Brian uh, Newdorf. Newdorf. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Who is Newdorf? I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> you said that wrong yesterday. And I'm like, wait, did I? What? Um, oh, well, I, I, I didn't feel bad, no. I didn't talk to Brian, but I did click on one of my uh, uh, internet sites, <clears throat> and it said uh, hi today of about 80. And on Friday, we should get real close to 90. Oh, my. So And, and lots of sunshine. So uh, it looks like to me that the weather's going to be a little bit more favorable for the next three or four days. Boy, I hope so. Oh, boy, I do too. So, it, I mean, it can't rain during the fair, although it has many times in the past. Yes, it has. Uh, and so. this has been quite the unusual this is, month. Yeah, this has been. We, uh, we were out of town over this last weekend, and 
we attended church services on Sunday morning, and the individual who was uh, conducting the, the meeting said, in case you're wondering what that bright object is in yeah. the sky, it's called the sun. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. So, all right. Well, so. So come out to the, the fair. fair. Yeah, especially between uh, 4 and 6 on Friday. On Friday, yep. yeah. We'll have a big crowd. Come oh, yeah. on by. Yeah, and, and I'll be there. I mean, yes. What other reason than that's just the, me? That's a primary. Oh, it's right all there. about me, Jim. Now, are that's you right. going to like pay him in like funnel cakes or something? Or, I don't know, elephant ears or whatever. What's your favorite <laughs> fair food, Cal? Oh, I don't know. I like those. Um, Here we go. Tater pigs. Uh, the tater pig would be good. That's good. Or those, uh, oh, man, those big hot dogs. What are they called? I can't think of anything. Corn dogs? Kielbasa? No, it's the, yeah, well, uh, yeah. It's the, longs? It's the, no, 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 no. It's what? the sausages, the, the uh, oh, holy sausages. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wow. like those pretty good. Okay, yeah. okay, Steve, but you're going to have to. Yeah, I don't know I, if you guys have enough in the budget. You, <laughs> you have to go to the fair, visit with your friends, have a good time, and eat lots of fair food. Oh, yeah. Stop by the Republican booth. Yeah, that's right. And we'll be right back here because it's all about me, right? Right. We'll be right back here. We're going to get into the meat of the subject next here on Top Story <laughs> with Steve Millington. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call with uh, Steve Millington with the Twin Falls Republicans. Okay, it's time now to get... Serious? Yeah, some serious stuff yeah. here. Okay, so the Idaho GOP has a new chairman. We know that. It's Steve Yates, and Yates appointed an executive director. So what does the executive director do, <laughs> and is David Johnson going to be a good match for the job? Well, the executive director, you, you, the state party chairman, is a non-paid position. And so we have to have somebody who it basically opens the doors and answers the telephones and sends out the emails and... And so this David uh, Johnson will be the full-time employee who works the office, keeps everything in line, contacts all of the counties, all of the various government uh, Republican organizations in the state, and keeps everybody informed of all the various events. Uh, Twin Falls uh, will have a uh, Lincoln Day banquet in uh, February, and we will post that on the state website so that they, uh, everybody in the state knows exactly when our Lincoln Day banquet is and, and all the details. And the other counties and organizations do exactly the same thing. And, and he uh, kind of rides uh, shotgun on, on the state uh, uh, chairman and schedules his time and events. Oh, and, okay. So and he's kind of a glorified secretary then. Why um, is that not a paid position, the state chairman, if you um, think he's executive some, director? In, in some yes. states it is, but in Idaho... Is it uh, a full-time job? The, no, it's, it's not. It's a volunteer position. No, I know it's a volunteer, but I mean, how much time does he put into a it? Because does he? Ha- but a he lot. has another job, Steve Yates, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. You would but have to. He, uh, he, he'll put an awful lot of time in hmm. and a lot of travel. Now, one of the things, if we were a more wealthy organization, we could probably give him a stipend to some kind of. But the Republican defer. Party isn't wealthy. Oh, yeah. I thought me? the Republicans had all the money. Yeah, Steve, you get all the lobbyists. Democrats don't have any. All the, the Democrats have all, all the, the money. The Republicans are just groveling here. Yeah. Have Mitt do a donation or so, something. Uh, and, and just reading the bio on this kid, he probably has got a pretty good background. Um, Got four years of military service. Has graduated from Boise State University. Uh, worked on the governor's uh, 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 office for a while. He was in the office of energy resources, mm, okay. and and I don't know what that means, but that's where he worked. Yeah, okay. And and the governor has many different. It, it's like the, the president. He has a cabinet, and they all have um, twelve. I think there's twelve or thirteen uh, cabinet positions, and they have staffers that assist in each of those positions. Well, this young man worked in the. Uh, uh, Office of Energy Resources. Oh, okay. So, right. and and it, it's kind of a you know a neat step out to go over and spend some time on the outside, so to speak. Yeah. But still involved in the political process. I have I have not met him. Uh, I have heard his name a couple of times. So it'll be interesting to get to know him better. We have a caller seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air with Steve Millington. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, it's interesting. I was just listening to the commercial. Before uh, Steve came on, uh, the latest commercial Otter is running. Yeah. Heard it? Yes. I, I think he's running scared to death, to be honest with you. Um, he's in the gutter right away. He's immediately, uh, you know, gone right down into the gutter, uh, dirty ad. Why is that, Steve? Do you think he's running scared? 
Well, I don't think he's running scared. I think he's running strong um, or stronger. I, I did not hear that commercial. Um, I have heard commercials for his opponent several times, but I have not heard Otter's commercial. So I must have not been paying attention somewhere. But uh, it, the thing that I think that's interesting is that uh, it's Labor Day and the, the campaign season begins in earnest come right. Labor Day. That's true. And, and uh, 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 A.J. Belukoff is uh, has come out swinging. He's attacking this one and this one and this one. And unfortunately, uh, as a incumbent, um, actually an eight-year incumbent, you are in a position where you have to defend rather than say, I will do this. You have to defend past practice and then push the ball forward and say, and we will continue by doing these things in the next four years. And so I think uh, uh, I, I wish... What do you think I, Otter could really I, defend on I his I apologize record? that I have not heard that commercial. I wish I had, but I will pay a little more attention. What do you think he could defend on his record? I mean, don't you think, I think he actually is going to have a fight on his hands this, well, this time. Well, I think, you know, any, any time that you come uh, against a, uh, an incumbent, um, you have got, as an opponent, you have got an established record of performance that you can begin to attack. And, and that's where Belukov is, is uh, uh, aiming right now. Um, Otter has got uh, eight years' worth of history as governor. And so it's going to be uh, uh, open game as far as uh, Belukov is concerned to start shooting at him. One of the things I wanted to talk about is next Tuesday, a lot of the school districts in the state will be going to get uh, voter approval for bond levies and such. And a lot of the voters in the state have complained that the state is one – is what needs to open up the coffers for the schools instead of making the schools kind of the term they use, beg for money from the local patrons. Uh, do you think that this is going to be an issue in the upcoming elections? And do you think a lot of people blame the Republican legislature for holding back education money for schools when now we have to go to the to the local bond elections? Well, that is going to be a really delicate point uh, in, in, in the general election. Uh, education is one of the always a hot button in in politics and and i think it's going to be more so this particular election cycle than in previous ones uh, the idaho uh, constitution states emphatically we will have a balanced budget we do not go into debt for uh, general operations we just don't um, that was compounded a few years ago when we uh, uh, switched over uh, the state was going to start providing much more revenue or, or uh, income stream to the local school districts through the increase of state sales taxes and, and uh, state funding. And that worked real well for about three years because the economy was running extremely hot and, and there was a lot of money coming in. And so they spent the money uh, primarily on, on education resources. When the recession hit, uh, we shall have to balance the budget. So they drew down uh, what we consider to be uh, rainy day funds and, and pulled those down uh, to zero, if I remember correctly, and, and took that money and put it back into the uh, budget process to uh, uh, keep from having to cut worse than they did already. Um, that is not always a very comfortable position to be in. Because people look at it and they say, why did you cut education? Well, we didn't. Education wasn't the only thing that got cut. Everything got cut. In fact, the education process um, was cut uh, on a percentage basis um, less than many other state operations were. But Rich but it was didn't, the one. But it Rich really was... didn't help the total education because everything got cut to bare bones. And, and what do they do? And, and so now... Uh, on the the comeback trail, um, the recession has. I mean, the yeah, the recession has not uh, boded as well on a recovery cycle as in previous recessions. So it's taken five. Well, we still are not back up to where we were in 07, 08. and and so we look at it and say we're doing the best that we can. But many people look at it and say, why are you messing with our children's education? And that's going to be a really hot button. 
But many people blame Jim Risch. So when he was in governor in 2006, he was the one who changed the formula from property taxes to sales and sales income taxes. taxes. And since then, that has been a problem. And that's um, why now they have to go to Levy. levies and bonds. But, I mean, it was really that change uh, in that no, formula that did it. We, we need to make a distinction between a, a levy and a bond. All oh, right. Now, bonds are primarily used for... Um, like the structure. New, of, yeah. Infrastructure yeah. creation, yeah. either yeah. the construction of new buildings or the rehabilitation of existing buildings or uh, extended maintenance on buildings. And so the bonds, the state never picks up that. Right. The levies is primarily used for the payment of operational issues, salaries, supplies, materials, all of those kinds of things. And, and that is a, uh, that's kind of a real problem. Now, back in 06... Uh, there was a lot of lawsuits filed that the state of Idaho was not funding school districts equally. And, and uh, in order to, because property tax revenues in one county were significantly lower than in another county. If you take Ada County, for example, holy Moses, they've got huge real property uh, valuations. Um, Twin Falls isn't too bad off on, on uh, uh, property valuations, but what do you do with Camas County? Yeah. See, they don't. They just don't have that opportunity. There's, they don't have any high-rise buildings up there that they can tax, and and so the sales tax formula was to level out revenues uh, uh, much more equitably across the state, so that the uh, smaller school districts would have the opportunity to pick up more revenue for their operations. Now, a lot of people will argue, too, that the uh, online sales tax money that Idaho keeps voting yeah. down is another issue, and that's another area we could get some more money. Other people say, no, nah, it's just more taxation. So I realize you have that push and shove. It, it, you know, every time you look at that, uh, there's two sides to every coin. And and uh, people do an awful lot of on t online shopping, much more than so than four or five years ago right. by a long way. And it's going to get more. And I think you're right. There will be a lot more online shopping. It's just too convenient. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, it's like so 30, you think 30, 35 million. So think the Republican legislature will be a little more open to online, collecting online sales tax in the future? That's going to be a very, very interesting question. Um, there doesn't seem to be much uh, interest in... in uh, uh, raising taxes, so to speak, even though it's you're not really raising the taxes. It's just an extension of a tax that's already supposed to be there. You look at your Idaho state income tax return, and it, there's a line right there that says sales taxes on online and yeah, out-of-state purchases. That's right, that's right. Okay? How many people actually do that? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know, but I think right. two and or three years ago, keep? they raised like six or $700,000 from yeah. people volunteer, voluntarily Putting in, I, I I bought this out of state, so here's my sales tax. As but as opposed to, to thirty to thirty five million, yeah, which they uh, estimate, yeah. uh, and that's a low number. I'm pretty that's sure. That's a low Jill. number. Yeah, it, that I, was a I few think that years number is closer to fifty now. We got another caller. Go Let's ahead. go to the phone. Top story. You're on the air with Steve Millington. You know, I would be more than happy to pay. You know, for education or even more, or even have the state help pick up the tab if they get rid of some of these stupidly small districts. I mean, some of these districts are so small, then they have to have a superintendent, a principal, and all this other stuff when they should be combining. And I think that if you cut the funding to the point where it says, look, or you redistrict, I mean, when's, you know, that we, we have to redistrict every 10 years based on population for congressional districts and Senate seats, but we don't have to do it for schools ever. So are you saying that Pocatello should have the same school districts that they had 50 years ago when their population was you know, 30, 40% higher than it is right now. It just doesn't make any sense to yeah. have a Valley um, school district and a Hanson school district. They should yeah. both have one school district, one superintendent. Cut some of that overhead. What do you think, Steve? Well, uh, you know, he, he, he raises a, an, an ex extremely touchy point because most people look at, at, at consol school consolidations and they say, don't you, don't you take away my school. Yeah. And that's the way we always couch the conversation is my school. There is a lot of savings. There could be a lot of savings uh, if we consolidate, if there was only one school district in, in each county. 
Now, in, in some counties, like Camas County, that's a non-issue because they only have one school. They don't have much of a county. But um, the caller raises an interesting point. Why do we have one in Cary and, and uh, Dietrich and Richfield and Shoshone? <clears throat> yeah. we have one I think c- isn't Cashew County has Cashew County has one a, has district one school district county. per county and Minidoka has one and uh, some other counties some of the smaller uh, more rural counties have already migrated to that platform and they seem to do quite well and and uh, the, the question is uh, ongoing forever why can't we consolidate these school districts and they say well you know our kids won't get the same quality of education and so forth well Meridian School District has got I don't know, 80,000 kids. And and so, you know, they seem to be doing... Well, Cashew County, Cash- Minidoka County. Yeah. Well, so it's more it, like we've, the we've administration. Talked to, we've talked to the administration officials about this time to time on the show, and they say, well, we calculated that out, and there's really not that much but, savings. Yeah, but right. I don't really see how you could keep from saving. The, uh, what they really need is a real hard-nosed cost accountant. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Steve, we're out of time. Thank you, Doggone. sir. We'll see you at see the you fair at the on fair. Friday. Friday, yeah. 4 to 6. The governor will be there. All oh, right. wow. Sounds good. And then we'll see you next <laughs> Tuesday again. Thanks, All right. Steve. This is Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. All right, welcome back. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on the third half of uh, Top Story with Kelly and Jill. That's right. Um, last last hour, we kind of got into a conversation over when kids should go to bed and get up. Right. And it really became kind of a lively conversation, and then we had to go because lively. we had other things on the agenda. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to revisit that, but the story was... And here's the headline. Pediatricians officially want high schools to start later. Studies have shown that it helps. Top education officials have recommended it. And now doctors are officially saying the same. On Monday, the American Academy of Pediatrics released a policy statement recommending that middle and high schools uh, high schools delay the start of class until after 8.30 a.m., About 40% of high schools in the country start earlier than 8 a.m., a phenomenon that has negative effects on teen safety, well-being, and education, according to Dr. Judith Owens, the director of sleep medicine at Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C. Adolescents are currently severely sleep-deprived, notes the report, with 87% of high school students getting less than the recommended amount of eight and a half to nine and a half hours per night. The reasons for this are varied. For biological reasons, it can be difficult for teens to fall asleep before 11 p.m. Beyond that, lifestyle factors such as homework and extracurricular activities also tend to keep adolescents awake. We really feel that this is such a compelling health problem that it really is in the best interest of students for schools to take this step, said Owens, the report's lead author. Uh, We're hoping the more we educate school districts and various stakeholders, the more schools will actually implement this on a practical basis. Research shows that sleep deprivation negatively affects student ages. Students' Uh, grades. Students' grades, I'm sorry. (laughs) A 2012 study found that middle school students who started class an hour later than usual saw their standardized test scores increase over two percentile points in math on average. Now, is a 2% increase, is that significant? I would think it would be. I don't know. If you think, uh, why not? The score changes are comparable to other differences we might see. The effects of starting school an hour later are similar to increasing grades we see when kids' parents have more education. Researcher Finley Enward said, "Uh, sleep-deprived teens also have higher self-reported rates of depression, higher rates of obesity, and lower rates of school attendance. When you delay school start times, all these factors improve. Less self-reported depression, fewer driving accidents, better grades, better test scores, and better attendance. The nation's top education official agrees with Owen's assessment. In 2013, Education Secretary Arne Duncan said that while schools are free to set their own start times, it's worth considering a delay. There's a lot of research and common sense that lots of teens struggle to get up to get on the bus, Duncan said last year in a broadcast interview. 
A unique harvest is... Oh, I'm sorry. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Started going into the, ne- to the next story. Uh-huh. So anyway, there you have it. So I don't know. Apparently, they've done some research that indicates uh, if we just started school later in the day, then uh, well, the, the kids would do better. Well, wh- why is that so awful? We start work. It starts at 8 or whatever. And, you know, they say part of the problem is is that when you start kids in high school... Later, elementary kids start, you know, earlier. You don't want them out in the street in the dark. But you know what? I mean, really, what's 8.30 to 4 as opposed to, what, 7.30 to 3? What is the big deal? I don't understand it. If they have, and obviously so teens you, you have different. So you know what will happen. I don't, if, I don't, if school goes later in the day, then they will start complaining because it's cutting into their extracurricular time. It's cutting into the sports time. Uh, and then, aren't you there for school, Kelly? As you always say, aren't you there for school? If your grades improve, oh, if, I'm just if, saying, if this all these be... factors help, why not? Okay, parents, you if your parents of teenagers, because I think it's really the adolescents as they're going through adolescence, they need more sleep and their circadian rhythms well, are different. Yeah. Well, my what argument, my argument, and yeah, seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. What do you think? Should should we delay school? Would your kids do better if they could get up later? I mean, if they but, got up at 7.30 and were on the bus you know, and left at 8 or whatever, you know, you get an extra hour. I know it would help us. We get an <laughs> extra parents. hour. But as, as, well, I'm not a parent, but, you know, as you age, you don't need as much sleep, but kids do, and it affects them. Well, and, my argument for that is instead of going to bed at midnight, go to bed at 1030. Well, they're saying also that they, you know, because of their bio- biology, they they have trouble falling asleep before 11. Plus, you have to do your homework and everything else. But if, if you, you go to bed up- at 11, they still need nine and eight and a half to nine and a half hours of sleep. So, you know, I see. I, I just, don't. What's wrong with an extra I, hour? I don't I don't get it. Just go to bed earlier. If OK, go to bed at 11 o'clock, because I will bet you that most teens probably aren't asleep by midnight. Because they're up texting and they're but playing even when Xbox they didn't have texting, kids stuff. slept in. Kids in my school and you're dazed for like two hours as you're in there. And if you did better in school because of your biology or physiology, why not? What is the big deal? One hour. What is the big deal if they're not going eight thirty to six? Actually, when why? we went to school a sophomore year, because we had so many juniors and seniors, I went from noon to six. My sister went from seven thirty to one or whatever it was because we didn't have a large enough school. But, you know, what's the big deal? Well, I don't understand changing a whole system of doing things just because kids can't go to bed early enough. Well, it's their... It's you're not teaching, listening. It's the it's pediatricians. It's not. It's not because they aren't disciplined. It's because they need more sleep. Okay. So, you know, they're I not saying they go to bed at 10 or 9. You don't... They said their, their physiology, they have trouble going to sleep before 11. That would change. The reason they can't go to sleep till after 11 is because they're not used to it. Oh, my if gosh. If you start going to bed earlier, you'll start getting up earlier by nature. What, Let's see what their the nature is different than our nature. Don't you Only get it? Only because we allow it as that parents. That is not. Oh my God. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. What do you think? Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, lovely Jill. Good morning. Kelly. Give me help. <laughs> uh, well, you got to be so antiquated. I mean, this we cannot go back to Kerry Ross who will be ten miles because he did something wrong. Come on, look what Google does. Look at what they do at Silicon Valley. They pampered their employees. Notice they let them. Take a little nap. So that's what we got to do at the school. Let them wake up whenever they want. Do the work. That way, you know, they can be more social. That way they can be more alert and, you know, bring some new ideas. Why do we got to uh, stick back to the same old schedule? Well, it's up to me, 10 o'clock in the morning. So your kids, you had kids, and did, <laughs> yeah. you, did they have trouble waking up as teenagers to go to school? Do you think if it was an hour later, it would be the end of the world? Oh, no, not at all. It, no. And then, you know, it, it, you just uh, uh, accustomed to the system. But, I mean, Kelly, Kelly and all these old, I mean, older than I am, um, <laughs> they, they want to, they, they, they wanna, um, you know, they're set on their old ways. I mean, it, it's the 21st century people. Technology is coming up. I mean, we can do, you know, if the, the, if the scientists and doctors all agree 2%, you know, you yeah. can go half percent, that's better. That's a program. Yeah. All righty. 
Thank you. Oh, Thank you. I, don't, I, I don't get it. So I, don't I guess get all it. these doctors who you know who study this and do research, I guess they don't. They have no idea what That's they're talking about. That's what they do. About. They write grants and then they have to do these studies and they have to come up with these theories that just go against everything we do. It's That's not how going they against work. everything they do. They're dealing with what teens are doing and they're trying to say that look at this would you help got- them if you do better on your test, if you have less depression, less obesity, less uh, school absence. What is the big deal? One hour. You got. 20- what is 24 hours deal. in the day, okay? Oh, my gosh. You, you can't extend that day by sleeping in later, okay? It's not going to make any difference. What if, are you talking about? If something starts the next day at the same time, just go to bed a little bit earlier to get a little more sleep. That's the part that, that makes sense. That is not sense. what they're saying. They're saying their natural rhythms, their natural um, hormones, their natural whatever they are as adolescents is different than as adults. And so that's when they, so they need one more hour of sleep. Why is that so difficult to it's understand? It's not difficult to understand. Let it them is. get the one hour of sleep one hour earlier. What they're saying is their bodies aren't naturally attuned to that. Their circadian rhythms are different. That 11 o'clock on is that's when ridiculous. they sleep. What, they're researchers and you're not. That's, they're pediatricians that's and you're not. Ridiculous. They deal with, st- with adolescents all the hours time. In the day. What difference does it make where you get that sleep as long as it's all together? That, there is a difference when you get that sleep. And when you're older, it? you don't is need it attached as much to sleep. to the movement of the moon or the tide or the stars or something? It's it's called their sleeping patterns, their circadian rhythms. That's what you, that's what happens then for you and you as you get older. how can you have people who do better getting up earlier? Then what are you going to say to those kids who do better getting up earlier? Oh, we got to go out of school, go to school later because what? so many of the little snowflakes have to sleep in in the morning. This is like research on what people's physiology is. You're, just, just because of your the theory, question. it's like they have research. They have adolescents. You know, older people sleep what four, five, six hours a night, but teenagers need more sleep. They're growing. Their understand. hormones change. But understand. apparently, you don't understand. I do understand. Let what them is go one to more bed hour? Early. That's they not go what's to bed. That is not earlier. their natural rhythm. You don't oh even understand. Oh my, oh my god. Seven three six zero three. Oh my Top story gosh. here on the air. What, what do you think? Yeah, I, uh, I'm i about the same age as you are, Kelly. And from the time I was eight years old, I had a herd of cows to milk in the morning before I went to school. Mm-hmm. We got up at 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning. Oh, you poor milked, baby. Milked our <laughs> herd of cows, went to school all day, came home, worked for another four or five hours at night, did our homework, and and... I was a I was a high B, low A student all the way through high school. And you were probably ready to go to bed by nine thirty, weren't you? Uh, it was usually ten o'clock. Okay, ten o'clock rather than midnight or one o'clock. The point is, people adapt. That's right. If there's a need, if there's a need, and you need to be up at four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning, then your sleep schedule adapts. That's right. It's just like these people that work all night. You know, they work all night, they go to bed at 8 o'clock in the morning, they sleep during the day, they get up and they go to work. And they have you more health problems. You do that long enough and your, work, or your sleep habits adapt to the point that if they work all night, it's to the, it gets to the point that during the day, they're sleeping even on their days off. But they also yeah. have more health problems. People how do you that know w- that? They have studies that show that. What do you mean, how do you know that? They have studies that show that. People that work at night have a higher risk of obesity. They have more health problems than people that have a natural. Oh, my God. Well, I'm sorry. Geez, I'm sorry that research is so upsetting to you. Those are the facts. I hate to, I hate to break it to you. The same with the circadian rhythms for the kids. That's just their natural phase. Adults are more awake at certain times. Yeah, I assume you, you could do that. But if that's not natural, why, what is the big deal about one hour? So I don't get it. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Yeah, you know, I, I think you both got good points. You know, Jill's got a good point with the uh, circadian rhythms, but also the previous caller had a good point with the fact that that can be adjusted and changed. I've got, I've got four boys, and I've got uh, two of them that are teenagers. And, and, of course, I was a teenager at one time, and I grew up on a farm and got up early and moved pipe and did all that kind of stuff as well. But the point is, is there's, there's, that can be changed and adjusted. We've got neighbor kids that run the neighborhoods all night, all summer long, and their kids and their parents say, well, how do you get your kids out of bed in the morning? Well, our kids go to bed at 930, and, and they get up early, yeah. and, and, and they do that. And that just happens, and yeah, when they're teenagers, they do need more sleep, 
But, you know, there's also been research and studies that prove. I've got to turn you loose. Going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. We are having a discussion. Why should the schools open up an hour later to accommodate the poor little snowflakes who don't want to go to bed who actually, earlier? Who actually attend the school? It's not that they don't want to. I mean, their their rhythms are different than ours. They That's don't called want research. To. If they really wanted to. They could. But before oh before God. that, yesterday's one hundred dollar instant winning name is Charles Bogue. Charles Bogue, congratulations! And your one hundred dollar word of the day for today is backpack. Backpack. B A C K P A C K. You know what backpack is spelled backwards? No. Cap cab. Okay, but don't enter that because that's not going to get you anywhere. You can go to our website at newsradio1310.com <laughs> and click on Word of the Day, type in backpack, and listen tomorrow. And if you hear your name tomorrow and you played the word today, you win $100 just like that. All right, so what do you think? Should we just change the way the schools operate and open up school an hour later, or should we make our kids go to bed earlier? Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, here's another one of those researchers, you know, out there. Um, yeah, we'd hate to have research, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what were they using? Mice again? No, uh, they're actually using kids. Oh, I think I think I'll think it's like coffee causes cancer, then they come out and say it doesn't. I'm getting tired of all these researchers. They don't know what they're talking about. You really? know, they do I mean, seem to you... fly in the face of reality, don't they? I mean, for crying out loud, it's what, just, are just no go to bed earlier. Are there no circadian rhythms? Are there, does it not change for adults as it does for teens? Of course it does, as it does for others. That's what they're talking about, how your body works. I mean... That's how, it, what, what do you mean it doesn't make sense? My normal sleep rhythm it's would be It's not to, based on you. Well, but I'm a human being. But you're not, not an be? adolescent, Ever since it changes. I, I was once upon a oh, time. for gosh I sake. could stay up until, when I was a teenager, I could stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning, and then I could sleep until the middle of the afternoon. That was my natural thing, I guess. And then I got a real job and had to get up in the morning and go to work. And you know what? Over the years... I've adapted for crying out loud. But apparently the poor little snowflakes that we have today, they can't adapt to that. We're They're just saying why not why not have, for them. Oh, why not have school that naturally fits better for them? It's school is actually to learn if they can do better in school, if they can have less depression, less obesity, less um, skipping school, just because of changing one hour in the school day. Why wouldn't you do that? You're adapting to your you, the people who are actually going to school. It's Why not about they just you. Just go to bed earlier. That that is not what what they're saying. Their bodies are different. Their circadian rhythms are different. Their dips are different than adults. They're trying to work with their bodies. It's their adolescence. My gosh, I don't understand what the big deal is. And yes, there is something called research, and there are pediatricians, and there are uh, kids out there that are different than adults. I mean, if you don't agree that teen that adolescents are different than adults something is wrong with you we've all adapted joe but and, adapt, adapting now but is that no doesn't longer a mean it's word, a better adaptation for them if their if their grades are lower if they aren't alert if they aren't doing better in school if they're having more car accidents my gosh I don't why think not it's based on what time school starts i think it's based on what time they go to bed seven three six zero three hundred top I, story you're on the air good morning Good morning, Kelly and Jill. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how come all the researchers only do a one-sided search? They they don't go with both sides of them. They always give one-sided of what the research was. What are you I've talking several, about? Well, they're talking about how many kids did they interview and doctors was interviewed or uh, put input into it on kids that went to bed early, and how many of them was was an equal number that they studied. I've worked several jobs. I've worked on graveyard shifts over the years. I've worked on swing shifts. My body adapts to whatever it is, and I've always had good ratings at all the jobs at different shifts I've had. 
Yeah, see, well, we, they, we adapt. That's the name of the game. But also the people that work night shifts have worse health than people who don't, who work a natural rhythm to what their body is. And that is fact. Those are those are statistics. Those are things you can look up. That's called research. Well, maybe we should and, just have it so you can go to work when you want to. You can leave when you want to. You can go to school when you want to. All they're talking about is your, one your hour. natural... Uh, you, oh my you know, gosh! All because the, the, your body's just doing it naturally. This is I mean, what that your would body be the does. Best way to handle this. I, I don't understand no why people to be are so. Just go when you want to. You know, I don't understand why it's such a problem. I don't understand this. Like, oh, because you did it, that's okay. Why not work with what the kids are doing? You know, you know when you're screwed up with jet lag, it messes up with your circadian rhythm when you're flying and and it's not your natural time and you don't fall asleep at the right time. I mean, those are just facts of how your body works. It's not like a study where people who drank coffee and some people didn't drink coffee. It's called, this is how your body functions. This is how your body works, you know? They uh, study your body. We have different functions. There's called doctors, human physiology. Oh, my gosh. Just get up earlier. That's the solution. Oh, my gosh. Get up. Or, I'm sorry, go to bed earlier and get up earlier. That is... You can get, There's no talking to you because if you say the same thing to you, you still don't get it. You just say the same response. I, I don't That's get That's not it what the research the, shows. The solution is simple. Yeah, you, what? Extend you it an more, hour. You need nine and a half hours sleep. Fix it in your oh day so gosh. you can get nine and a half hours sleep. You're ridiculous. 7360300 is the number to call. 7360300 is the number to call here on Top Story. And, uh, you know, Dave Hansen and the crew at Canyon Pond want you to come down and see the newest pawn shop in town. They are now open on Shoshone Street, which is, uh, that is South Shoshone Street, just across uh, from Will's Toyota. All mm -hmm. right, so it's it's hard to miss. A nice little building there. It used to be Vickers Western Store. It's right on the corner across from Will's. You can't miss it. Nice, clean, friendly locally owned and that's important and they got brand new items they got used items they got all kinds of miscellaneous stuff they got fishing poles they got tools they got woodworking equipment recreational equipment and they have ladies and gentlemen g u n s oh, they have guns and they got a lot of them and dave likes to put some of the ones that he has for sale on facebook and i am a friend with him on facebook and i see these and i think man i ought to run down there and buy that you know so uh, at any rate, uh, stop in, ask how you could win a Savage 17 HMR with AccuTrigger. And that's the folks at Canyon Pond. They're waiting for you, and uh, you can stop by and tell them that uh, Kelly and Jill sent you. Okay, so we're, we're arguing over this research that was apparently done by pediatricians saying, gee, if we just open school an hour later our kids would do so much better and you see i think all they need and we to would do, hate that all they need to do is just go to bed a little bit earlier and i view this as like the feds build a highway and the feds put the stop signs on all the signs in the speed limits and such and they're all a foot too high so what is the solution the solution is is to just lower the signs a foot instead the feds would go in and raise the highway a one foot you see, that's, no, the that, difference. that's that, what we're talking that about here. That is not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about should school be more in line with what the kid's natural uh, internal body clock is. So if you delayed an hour, is it going to be the end of the world? Has anyone even called up to say, what? how would that affect your life if school got out at four as opposed to three? How does that affect your life? Actually, I think it'd probably help people. You wouldn't have daycare as long. You wouldn't have to worry about your kids fooling around without What do you mean uh, you without have daycare them. as long? Why? I mean, what? Say you pick up your kids, they go from school, they get a date from four, you pick them up at five after work, so instead of three to five, you have to worry about them. You know, latchkey kids, they might be home a couple hours, they might be home only one hour. My gosh, I don't understand the argument. If kids do better, they have, they've proven they've done better, they've proven their health their health issues aren't as bad. I don't, I don't get it. Why not? And it's not like this is whacked out research. These are called your natural body rhythms that everyone has, See, our internal body clock. This is clock a sledgehammer That approach. changes from teens all you have to, do is go to, to adults. That's not all you have to do. That's not all you have to do. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're oh, on the air. What do you gosh. think? Kelly, is that you? That's me. Unfortunately, Good morning, Jill. yes. Good morning, Good morning. Kelly. <laughs> You didn't sound like Kelly. Don't be nice. Don't be mean. I should say, be nice. <laughs> Kelly's kind of right in a way, Jill. In fact, why? Where you're saying you don't understand, I almost think you don't mind spending somebody else's money. What does that mean? You're getting the kids home later, but an hour later, right? 
what are you doing in the morning? Economically, a lot of people are in work and taking their kids to school in the morning on their way. So what do they do, stay home an hour later to take their kids to school, or do we run two bus routes, or, or, or what do we do? Well, how do, do we change the whole economics? If these are if these are adolescents, if this is high school, they couldn't. You, you go to school what? You're there by eight thirty. A lot of people start work at eight thirty. They don't start work at seven thirty. Well, but a lot of a lot of them are in elementary, and if they go to work, go to uh, school at eight thirty, and you have to be to work at eight o'clock. They're talking about do that? high school. They're talking about yeah, adolescents. They're not talking about possibly. elementary is that schools. What you're doing, running the two bus routes, and when do high school kids ride a bus with elementary kids? They do you're running all two the bus time. routes. Then. I don't. When, when when do they do that? Well, you're asking them to change the change the rules. I'm sure that economically they'd have to change bus routes or schedules or something, wouldn't they, Jill? Well, if they did and it helped your kids do better in school, wouldn't you be happy about that? I want to make one more comment that you were talking about earlier, and that's consolidating these schools. I constantly hear about teachers buying supplies for their own students. My comment would be if they consolidated the schools and took out some of these high-priced, high-wage superintendents on these little bitty towns, the school system could pay for their own supplies without the, the teachers having to supply them. Yeah, that's part well, of the that argument. that would be nice. I think we're going to continue to hear this argument in the future until something is done. I, I really do, and I think, it, I think it's a discussion we need to have. 736-0300, top story, you're on the air. What do you think? Okay, my comment would be we are always comparing our students to the Asian schools or European schools and how much better they are than our kids. And I know for a fact that they go to school sometimes earlier, stay longer. And so if we are always comparing ourselves, maybe we should do the same thing, send them earlier to school. Pick them up later, and they maybe go to they school on just, Saturdays, too. Maybe they should just work 24 hours be at school, because, you know, well, they just aren't learning enough. Always, well, they just well, aren't learning enough. Well, that's understanding what the studies say. That's right, and they studies go to school on that. Saturdays. Oh, and my, my gosh. Comment One is, hour. And my comment is on when you were saying about Jill on... What? Um, yeah, we're not going to have time for yeah, your comment. Unfortunately, you we've got to go to a break. We'll be Sorry. right back here on Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call. We're gonna we're gonna change uh, directions here just a little bit <laughs> because <laughs> we're not moving. <laughs> we're not solving this problem at all. <laughs> There's no solution. Here's another story. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, for that's goodness sakes! Pick one. up here the right is. story. Here Let's just is. read the part that you want. Go on. In Winooski, Vermont. City officials like to involve local businesses in its effort to keep flower beds healthy and thriving in town. The deal is that if shops help with gardening, they can post advertisements for their services in the same spots. So after Sneakers Bistro and Cafe kicked in for Operation Bloom at the bottom of the Winooski Circle, the restaurant put a bright yellow sign on a lamp post telling drivers to yield for bacon at sneakers all right well soon a discussion about diversity was underway on the winooski front porch forum highlighted by one woman who wrote that the sign was insensitive to those who don't consume pork and as a muslim she's offended by it once the bistro owners found out about the complaint they got a hold of the woman they told her to forget it get out of the area it's none of your business da 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 no not really actually what they did they <laughs> said that they reached out to the woman and they took the sign down hmm. WPTZ added that the owners also said they regret any harm caused by the sign and that their goal never was to cause stress or bad feelings not that Winooski townsfolk harbored similar concerns uh, many of the people said, hey, you know what? Uh, it's nice they were respectful enough to take it down, but I also think that they shouldn't have or had to at any rate. A post on the Front Porch Forum insisted that the word bacon is not offensive as it simply describes food. 
Uh, one other person was a little more direct. He says, I respect her religion and her right to believe what she wants, but I'm pretty sure the First Amendment extends to bacon and the selling of it. Likewise, comments on social media overwhelmingly hammered sneakers owners for taking down the sign. The well, question you know what is, up? it's up to them if that's what they wanted to do. The question is, what would you do if you had a sign up that said break for bacon well, no. for your restaurant or whatever it said, yeah, something about bacon, yeah. uh, and, uh, and yield it, uh, for bacon, yield for bacon, and it offended someone, would you take it down or would you tell them tough? Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're maybe on the air. Good morning. Mus- maybe they have a large Muslim community there that we don't, I don't know, know about. I don't know. What would you do? Good morning, Good morning Kelly and Jill. Good, Good morning. morning. I'm getting so tired of this. I mean, it. People get offended so easily. There's a the majority of the people in the area probably like bacon. That's why that business is open. Agree. You know. How come every time one person feels offended, the whole world has to flip upside down? Agreed. Well, they had a choice. They Agreed. didn't have to take it down. See, you no, know, I bet you if they didn't, it turned into a lawsuit like everything else. Uh, well, and, I don't know if they know, could win that lawsuit. Maybe, maybe we should win the war by dipping our bullets in bacon. <laughs> I don't know if that would help or not. No, I, I, I agree. The whole It seems like there are so many people in the world today who are just walking around in search of something to be offended by. Well, I mean, I don't people, know why some that people is. are offended and things are offensive, and I think standards have changed. On this one in particular, I mean, you know, being Jewish, we don't eat bacon, but, you are know. Are you offended by seeing I, a sign that says I'm yield to bacon? I'm also a vegan, so there's a lot of things I could be offended about, but okay, I'm but, not. Are, but are you? I, no, I wouldn't be. Okay. I don't know, but that doesn't mean anything. I don't know. Maybe they have a large Muslim community there, and they thought for business, maybe I should um, take it down as opposed to, you know, creating a stir. We don't know what the population is up there. But it is a business decision. If they decided they wanted to do it, great. Oh, they didn't, I, nobody's arguing that. Right. I think the discussion comes in here is when are we going to decide that we're just going to stop being offended? You know, well, I mean, it's there your are choice are whether you want to be offended. There's a lot of things that happen in my life on a daily basis that I could be offended by. You know what? I just let it roll off and I move on with my life. But some people absolutely refuse to do that because they just want to make life hell for everybody else, claiming that they're offended by some stupid little asinine thing. Well, maybe thing. They, she was offended, but the business, like I said, they didn't have to take it down. They chose to, and that's that's called America, right? Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. What would you do? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Um, you know, there's the possibility, too, that threatening phone calls were made or threats were made that no one ever heard about because there is a certain section of this community that is quite violent. So you never know you mean what that, you mean made to the restaurant? behind the scenes that may have caused them to take that down. It may have not just been as simple as it looks. Yeah, well, I, I understand that. And there that. could I, be a large uh, population. I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know if there was something like that because, I mean, they were just, oh, my gosh, we didn't mean to offend anybody with our bacon sign. It's like, are you kidding me? How stupid is this going to get, folks? Well, I mean, we got the political correctness police out there, and I understand, as a matter of fact, that they were packed and ready to go from the administration in Washington, D.C., oh, headed for Vermont to teach these restaurant people a lesson. But since they took the sign, maybe that's what prompted them to take the sign down. They thought, oh, boy, maybe we don't have, want to be visited by the political correctness police from the Obama a administration. We better take this Muslim down. Muslim population, and they thought, wow, this is going to start a, a fuss, and we might lose business Maybe that they way. should go to bed earlier. Maybe they should market it's, their business better. It's time for the Huckabee Report. And you can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed. Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger are the financial advisors, and they have a phone number you can call, and it's 736-6563. I have another phone number you can call. It's 324-3341. That's the phone number for Far More of Idaho, where they have the Serta set. Hmm. The Serta set, yes, no moving pipe, no borders. With the Serta set system, you're able to grow and harvest every square inch of your field. This is a flexible pipe that the uh, equipment that you are driving 
moves around out of the way so that you can get to your crop and do the uh, the things that you do as a farmer. And you don't have to move the pipe. You don't have to send a crew in and have them move it out before you can go in and take the hay out. And then when it's done, you don't have to bring the crew back out and have them go back out and set the pipe back up. That certainly sounds good. I know. Very it sounds convenient. good to me. You know, yeah. I'm thinking about going and getting some just for my yard. Oh, jeez. You know, then I don't have to roll up the hoses before I want to mow the lawn. I don't think it has anything to do with the lawn, but for the fields, it does. <laughs> and they can tell you all about it. Ask them about the Certiset at Farmore of Idaho. Their number is 324-3341, and they're online at farmoreofidaho.com. Uh, again, now coming up, I'm going to be at the fair Thursday also. I believe I'm going to Are be you? at the Twin Falls County Weed Bureau, I believe. Stop. That you have a remote at the Weed Bureau? I believe so, yeah. Should I'll I bring ask... you some of my weeds to give back to them <laughs> since they seem to be growing so well with the rain? Especially with the rain. Isn't that the truth? I'll my give you, lot, my I'll yard give you a wheelbarrow. Yeah, I'll give you a wheelbarrow to take growing. to them. And then, Here. And then Friday I'll be at the uh, Twin Falls County Republican booth Ooh. Uh, from 4 until 6. Uh, the governor will be there. And so Steve Millington will be there and some yes, of the other will. local elected I'll tell officials. you who won't be there. You? I won't be there. What a chicken. Oh, what a oh, what? Chicken. They could have invited me. It's a remote from our radio station. Come on. What's wrong with the Republican they Party? Probably, they don't mind they if you can by. handle the truth. <laughs> they wouldn't mind if you stopped by. Are you, you kidding? Might, you might get it. You might. Uh, ah, what? You might find some of the truth there. You might ruin you know. the demographics of their bean pole. <laughs> So anyway, looking forward to that. That'll be fun. And I think I might even get a corn dog or something or an elephant now, ear what's your or favorite? all of the above. What's the thing you look forward to every year at the fair oh, that I don't you know. go back? I don't know. I just I just buy fair food, you know? So it doesn't matter. You don't have just one buy, favorite? Just buy fair food. Nothing I like, favorite. I, I I like the Polish dog. The, the, uh, what do they call it? Oh, was Polish it the kielbasa? I, yeah, don't maybe. they call it that? It's the Polish hot dog. I just, oh. it, my smell takes me to it. And I say, put one of those on a bun and I'll take it. You know, not an American and I, and hot dog, I eat it Kelly. And you're, it's great. You're going European on so. us. You're going to like <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. Hey, uh, tomorrow we'll have the state of the city and so much more. So we'll see you then. Want you to have a great day. Goodbye, Jill. Bye, Cal.